In this video, we are going to see that how we can use Gemini 2.0 on GenKit. So first of all, if you are not aware about GenKit, it's a framework designed to help you know, build AI powered applications, you know, mainly through JavaScript. So not everybody is like familiar with Python. There are a lot of developers out there who are, you know, working with JavaScript. So how they can use a framework which is, you know, based on JavaScript. So Firebase GenKit, you know, it's it's it can run anywhere where Node.js is supported. You know, so you can use this if you're working with Node.js and so on and so forth. So I have a video on GenKit already where I have shown that how one can build a Discord bot, you know, using Firebase GenKit. It's really powerful, you know, if you are working on the JavaScript side and if you want to build Gen AI applications, you know, it supports, you know, using LLMs mainly through the Google models like Gemini 1.5, Gemini 2, the newly released model by Google, which is Gemini 2.0, which has performed really well on the leaderboards. So I'm going to show you, I think Gemini 2.0 was released a few weeks ago, you know, and it will be released to the public like early next year, but the API has been made available, you know, to the developers. So we'll try to use that via GenKit. So this is the website that you see. It's a documentation, you know, for Firebase GenKit. And you can build pretty cool applications, you know, with this uh, uh, this framework. If you look at here, they they have a lot of, lot of tabs here in the sidebar where you can look at how to build flows, you know, how to do function calling, how to build rag applications also not only on building these uh, applications, but you can also do observability and evaluations, you know, using this amazing framework. That's what we're gonna look into this, right? So, and you're gonna set this up locally. Uh, you know, I'm going to run this locally in my machine. You can do the same on Firebase as well, or even on GCP, uh, GCP platform as well. So to, you know, to follow along, you need a, uh, API key so you can get that API key from here called Google AI Studio. You just go on aistudio.google.com slash API key and you can get an API key from here, right? Now to, to do this, let's open a terminal, you know, so for, I'm just opening a terminal here and inside this terminal, I'm going to run, the, run a you know bunch of commands. Okay, so first of all, let's create a, you know, let's create a directory here. So I'm going to say you know, something like demo and I'm going to do CD inside it. So let me just do that. Okay, and you can see it has created a term, uh, a, a folder or directory called hello genkit demo. And now I'm going to initialize, you know, so I'm going to do npm init hyphen y you know to initialize here so if you initialize that you know you can find out basically let's create a package json and of course this is gonna get appended as well when when we install uh node modules into it so if you look at here it says you know uh version the descriptions and the main we're gonna create uh index.ts later on blah 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 right now I'm going to install a few things here. The first thing that I'm going to install is, of course, the CLI. You know, so that's what I'm going to do, right? So I'm going to install GenKit CLI here because we are going to run this locally. So let me just do that. npm i you know, hyphen d GenKit CLI and it's going to take a bit of time, guys. So let's wait for that. And when this is installed, we, we are going to install, uh, you know, GenKit AI, the Google AI is also available through uh, NPM as well. So we can also install that. So I'm just going to install that as well right after this. So let me just okay do that here. So NPM, okay, I think this is almost done. Perfect. And the next thing is NPM I, and I'm going to do GenKit. You know, space at the rate and you can see I already have installed previously I've worked on these uh, these modules you know so it shows me here so Google AI and let's just install it here so you can see it's now installing GenKit at the rate GenKit AI and Google AI if you 
I'll re I will recommend you to watch my previous video on how I built a Discord chatbot and we integrated that in our Discord server through the same framework. And I'm gonna just do a mic directory here and just let's do code dot and I'm gonna open this in VS code here. Now, if you look at here, I'm, I've opened this in VS code and in the VS code, what we have, we have a node modules, which is just like if you're working with Python, you know, this is very similar to what we do. when We create a virtual environment and install all our packages and libraries inside those VENVs. Very similar way in, in when you work with JavaScript libraries or frameworks, you know, you have something called node modules where you install all the packages through NPM, YARN or so on and so forth. And we have a source folder, SRC folder that we created. Inside this folder, we're going to create a file called index.ts. So let me just do that. And then we have package JSON where we have, you know, we of course we're going to append this. If you see here, it it has now appended with Jenkit CLI, Jenkit Google AI, so on and so forth. Now, index.ts, before that, we have to create an ENB file. So let me just do that. An ENB file here that, that you can see I have just you know done it. Now what I'm gonna do is probably you know uh, create bring my API key here. So let me just bring that here. All right, guys. So I saved my API key here, like I've defined that in the dot env. What you can also do if you're running it locally, you can set it through terminal as well. So you can just you know use export if you are on on a Ubuntu machine or if you are on a Linux machine, you can use the export command and then the Google underscore gen underscore API underscore key, and then you can just set the API key. If you're on if you're on Windows. You know, you can use the set or set text if you're on PowerShell. So you can use these commands to basically set in your environment. But I prefer it to do it in through .env file because this is the recommended way to do it because you can send this code to someone. It also helps you in deployment in production where you can define environment separately through an env file or through an env settings and you can do that. Now in the next thing, we're going to write the implementation, not a lot of code. It's it's in the documentation. I'm going to copy it from a GitHub gist and I'm explain that a few things. So let me just do that. But you can find it out here as well. Like, you know, if you go to the documentation, you can find find out a bunch of thing here. You know how you can, you know, load the model and define it. You can see it over here, right? So I have a gist here. So let me just click on raw and then control A, control C come here. And I'm going to explain that a few things. If you are using the documentation, probably you know you will not have those things. By the way, if you look at here, it shows that .env is not installed. Let's install .env. So this is how you install .env. npm install .env, and this is going to install .env. And now this red line will, of course, will not be there in a bit, but that's fine. Okay, you can see it's it just it just faded away faded away now. So what we are doing here, okay, uh, if you look at these these things this is probably you will not find in documentation so what i'm doing i'll first explain that we have you know we are importing everything that we need our dot env because our uh it's, it's in our env so i'm just going to close this okay and excuse me i think i created this in a wrong folder it should be out of the folder okay so i said that here in the env earlier it was in the src folder but you have to keep that in the it's better to keep that in the root directory. You know, that's where I kept it here. Now you can see now what we are doing here, you know, apart from the logging and the imports, you know, we are using Gemini. We are, we are seeing the model Gemini 2.0 flash experience and a uh, flash. And you will see that over here, you know, once we run this, okay. Uh, you know, once we, once we open that, when we run this locally and open that in browser on localhost 4000, you will see this model available over there. Now, it first load the model as like this and you can define a bunch of other models as well but by default there will be models so we're going to talk about it in a bit now the next thing that what we are doing you know uh, if you look at here we are defining a flow it's called main flow that that has to be there by default you know if you open it uh, the main main flow and then just generating the output over here you know for a given input you know and then just run the flow so this is pretty simple command guys over here you know, so let's run this. How do we uh, start this app locally when the setup is now complete? You know, to basically it's a developer tool that we can start in our local environment. So let me just do that. So I'm going to do npx 
and you can see yeah th this is the command so probably npx gen kit start i can also just do use the arrow key but i want to you know i want to type it so you can like probably follow it along and you're going to do npx not when you, know, you have to give a space and otherwise px tsx typescripts watch and then you just do src that's where you have kept your file if your file name is different make sure it's different like it's not this whatever file name you define it has to be here so what we are doing we are saying npx gen kit start hyphen o hyphen hyphen space npx space tsx hyphen space hyphen hyphen watch and space src slash index ts let's run it and see what happens it will open a tab within your browser on localhost 4000 it says waiting to connect now it says welcome to firebase genkit create run debug and evaluate your genkit ai is fantastic now if you look at here on the runners it has five models so let's come here in the models and this is fantastic because you know you can set it up locally you can start using it within your own you know environment or infrastructure you do not have to like you can use this for free as well for some kind of testings and use cases validations you know if you want to try it out these models now if you look at here on the right hand side in the model uh, drop down so we have two things one is config and the other is tools very similar looking playground if you would have seen the similar playground on open ai and anthropic and so on and so forth now here in the model you can find out all the gemini models like gemini 1.0 gemini 1.5 pro gemini 1.5 flash which is which is selected by default and then you have flash 8p but we are interested in flash 2.0 flash right that's what we are interested in and let's keep the temperature value as 0 0.3 and there are some top p top k blah 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 this is all fine now i'm gonna say uh, put a system prompt you are a helpful ai assistant and you can based on your use cases you can basically do it anything you know extract extract the text from the image and explain that and i'm going to upload a media here you know in this media i'm just going to upload this simple file and now you can just run now once you run it for the first time it might take a bit of time guys because when you're running it for the first time it has to pull the model but it was pretty fast if you look at here it says the text extracted from the image is agent watch because this is the image that i you know i i, I just uploaded a very simple image you can see it's a library that we have built earlier you know by scratch from scratch now it says the text extracted from the image is agent watch pip install agent watch and here is the explanation and of course it's in the markdown format it tells you that this indicates the name of a software package or tool called agent watch and its version number which is 0.1.2 this suggests that it is a relatively early version of the software pip install in essence the image is showing the name and version of a python package and blah 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 now click on the view trace when you click on view traces in the trace you can have all your monitoring and logging thing inbuilt here in the left hand side you can also find out when you click on traces right now you can see it there's only one instance that is showing it was success you know when you click on it it shows you the time it took so the latency part of it you have your input you have your output uh fantastic right so it gives you a bit of monitoring and the other attributes like you know start time end time durations blah 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 right fantastic right now you can also export this in a json you know it's a json that you can export but we're not, not going to do that here let's come back to models and let's ask some other question so I'm just going to ask here, uh, give me the code snippet to fine tune on an NLP model for named entity recognition. And if you want that, you know, uh, with Gemini 2.0, which is the best model out there from Google, that's what they say, guys. So if you you know you can also use this in software development life cycle use cases for code generation code testing you know converting code from one languages to other languages and a lot of other use cases that you know you can use it when you use this for uh, these kind of questions it takes a bit of more time so here you can see it break it basically is breaking down the code you know, it basically breaks down the code here gives you how to fine tune it 
you know it's using a model called bot but uncased you know for named entity recognition surprising you know and it has it uses a data data sets called c o n l l you know i have 2003 and i'm not impressed with this i'm really not impressed with this output okay i was expecting a bit more here but this looks this is still fine let me ask a question like uh do you know about ai any times let's see the knowledge cut off here you know for the model and let's run it now when i ask this question let's see what happens so i'm asking here do you know it says ai anytime generally refers to the idea of making you know, blah 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 uh okay so not at all what i was expecting so i'm not sure how what's the knowledge cut off you know of this model uh we have to go to the like the technical report etc now this is on the model that you can use other models as well now it also has a dark theme from an user experience standpoint you know it also if you click on docs it takes to the documentations the same documentation that i was showing you and here on the about us we're not interested in that now if you look at the flows the main flows that we have configured here in the code you can also define other flows you can create a flow let me show you on the documentation here guys and if you come here on the documentation you can find out creating flows you can define ai workflows over here so you can just go through the documentation if you want to build you know if you want to do function calling or if you want to do streaming and so on and so forth so you can just define it and you define it over here once you define it over here it will be visible on your localhost 4000 you can see how many flows they have created over here in the documentation now let's go back in the prompt you can also set prompt you know in in your project you can save some prompts over here and in the embedders you can also do like uh, select an embedder to run so they already have one you know for rag and stuff but i'm not showing it you can figure it out yourself like this is an embedding thing that they have over here on the evaluations you know you can also use that for evaluation the traces you will find multiple traces now that's what it is guys amazing tool to use it in free you do not have to pay anything you know for testing and validations set it up locally so you do not have to rely on any cloud and anything like that you know you can just do it locally and try it out by yourself not a lot of configurations and settings uh, you can follow the documentations pretty neat and clean documentations and you will be able to build uh, applications on top of it if you have any questions thoughts or feedbacks do let me know in the comment box you can also reach out to me through my social media channels you know find those information on channel banner and channel about us if you like the content guys please hit the like icon if you haven't subscribed the channel yet please do subscribe the channel because that motivates me to create more such videos in near future that's all for this video guys i hope you like this firebase chain kit gemini 2.0 video you know and that's all for this thank you so much for watching see you in the next one